Learning Objective 17-5, understand and explain the basic differences in the measurement focus and basis of accounting between governmental and private sector accounting. So when we talk about the measurement focus, what we're talking about is which flows you would measure for purposes of operations. Um, when we talk about financial accounting, it's everything. We're interested in every, all non-owner related um, flows of resources. The basis of accounting would be when transactions and events should be recognized in the financial statements. And we have guidelines in financial accounting for that in terms of revenue recognition and expense recognition, when to recognize revenue and when to recognize expenses. So we have basically three possible ways of dealing with all these different issues, and that would be cash basis and accrual basis, which you should already be familiar with. And then we have in governmental accounting what's called the modified accrual basis, which takes is kind of in between. So for governmental activities, the measurement flow is only going to include current financial resources, and the basis of accounting is going to be the modified accrual basis. So the, the statement of revenues and expenditures and changes in fund balance are is going to present financial resources received and spent, the change in net financial resources, and available for spending in the near future. And what we're really focused on here are financial resources, not all resources. And we're also focused on what's available for spending in the near future. So this is quite different from the way we do commercial accounting. Now the measurement focus and basis of accounting for current financial resources is only going to look at, for purposes of assets, cash, property, taxes, receivables, prepaids, and supplies inventory. The liabilities would be things like wages, payroll taxes, payables, liabilities expected to be paid in the near future. And when we record liabilities, we only record liabilities that are due this year and within 60 days after year ends. So it's a very different definition of assets and liabilities than what you're used to because we're only focused on these current financial resources. If we go to proprietary and fiduciary activities, things are quite different. And there we go back to what we're used to. Measure flow is all economic resources. Base of accounting is the accrual basis of accounting. And it's almost identical to what you would do in good old financial accounting gap. We're going to present what's called a statement of revenues and expenses, not expenditures, expenses, and show the change in economic condition. And we're going to present a statement of cash flows. Now, when you use, I don't know why this is here. It should have been earlier. Oh, they're contrasting modified accrual versus the accrual basis, all your governmental funds, all five types, are going to use what's called a modified accrual basis. And the, this is these are focused on the flow of current financial resources. And that's going to be different from the accrual basis that's going to apply to proprietary and fiduciary funds. That's going to be all economic resources, as we've seen before in financial accounting. And the government-wide financial statements, which encompass everything, including the governmental funds, are going to be based on the accrual basis. So governmental funds really need to be kept track of in two different ways. The funds themselves are going to follow this modified accrual basis, but then they're going to need to be adjusted later on to a full accrual basis so that government-wide financial statements can be prepared. And your statement of revenues and expenditures and changes in fund balance under the modified accrual basis, these slides are a little bit out of out of room. They're, they're kind of, I don't know, they, they kind of follow an awkward, an awkward um, sequence, is again going to focus on financial resources. So this would be like your P&L, for, but for governmental funds. And it's going to focus exclusively on financial resources. And it's going to show you the change in net financial resources and the balance available for spending, along with, with some other information too. 
So these five governmental funds are going to be under the modified accrual basis. The accrual basis, again, as I said before, follows all economic resources model similar to financial accounting. There's a couple of little things that are different. So this will apply to everything that's not a governmental fund, i.e. proprietary funds and fiduciary funds. It's also, as I said before, used for government-wide financial statements. I don't know why they don't put the hyphen in there. And you're going to present a statement of revenues and expenditures. You're going to present a balance sheet. I don't know why it doesn't say that. A change in economic condition and a statement of cash flows. So here you can see the accrual-based funds would be your proprietary and fiduciary funds. Now here's where it gets in here. Here's where it goes into the details of some of the things that are going to be included in modified accrual. Revenue is going to be recorded when measurable and available to finance expenditures. And this slide is really key. We've gone over a lot of things that are repetition, but you really want to know this. Revenue is recorded when it's measurable, and as you know the amount, and it's available to finance expenditures. Measurable means you can objectively determine the amount. We'll talk about what type of revenues the government fund takes in in a little while. Available means it's going to be collected this period, or they expect to collect it within, um, it's expected to be available to pay current period liabilities. And that means within 60 days. So this 60-day rule is extremely important. Available means 60 days after the end of the year. Expenditures are recognized when the liabilities are measurable and incurred, and, and that, that's the same as you know financial accounting liabilities, but this is new. They're payable out of current financial resources. In other words, you need to pay the liabilities this year or within 60 days of year ends after into next year. And that would be an expenditure. And it, it, you're probably wondering, is there a gray area there where you could have some choice? Like, am I going to pay this in 60 days or 45 days or 90 days? Maybe if I pay the bill a little later, then it's not an expenditure. Yeah, there is. And it's pretty weird. Now, another thing that distinguishes government is that it has the non-exchange transaction revenue. So normally, when a company sells something and receives revenue, it has given up something in exchange. So if you go to the store and you buy a book for $100, you give them $100 and they give you a book. And all through commercial accounting, it works that way. You give up a little money, and they give you something in return. And there's a legitimate exchange transaction that goes on there. And that's how the world of financial accounting works. Revenue means that you've provided a service in exchange or service or a product in exchange for the revenue that you received. When it comes to government, government has the ability to charge revenue and collect it without providing anything else in return, besides the good feeling that you've paid your taxes. So this is called a non-exchange transaction. You also have non-exchange transactions in not-for-profit organizations where donors donate money to the organization just because they want to feel good and to do a kind act, so to speak. So we have this idea of non-exchange transactions, and so the government doesn't actually have to do anything in order to, it's kind of weird, this is slightly off, and I don't know why. The government doesn't have to do anything to earn its revenue. So when are you going to recognize revenue? Normally, you would recognize revenue when it's earned. But governments don't earn revenue. They assess it. They levy it. So when are we going to recognize revenue? First thing to recognize is that 
get it, recognize. First thing to recognize is that the government has the authority to levy taxes without having to give anything of equal value in exchange for the taxes. And so we're going to have four categories of revenue. Category one, which is really the most important, is what's called derived tax revenues. And this would be things like income tax and sales tax. So it's going to recognize when the underlying transaction occurs or resources are received, whichever comes first. So for example, sales revenue, sales tax would be based on a sale takes place and you assess the tax. So therefore the transaction occurs when the underlying sales takes place. Income taxes is a little more difficult because you don't know how much you're going to receive. So there you would want when the resources are received or you may be able to work with an estimate. So when you actually receive them, it would be the whichever of these two things is um, comes first. The second category is what's called imposed non-exchange revenues. And these are also extremely important. And the main one is property taxes. And when the government has an enforceable legal claim to the resources, or the resources are received, whichever comes first, then you recognize the asset. So here, by property taxes, once you assess your property taxes, you can record it as revenue, because you know you're going to get it. So it's going to be made when use of the resources for current expenditures is first permitted or required, or when the asset is recorded if no time restriction on the funds use of the resources exists. And we're going to go into examples of this in a little while. Category three are government mandated non-exchange transactions. So remember, first one was derived tax revenues. Second was imposed non-exchange revenues. And this third one is government mandated non-exchange transactions. So these would go between different governments, from one governmental unit's provision of resources to a governmental unit at another level, requiring the recipient use the resources for a specific, specific purpose. And these are mainly grants. So if the federal government gives grants to state or local um, units, that's where category three would apply. And then you'd have voluntary non-exchange. I'm sorry, these are more like government programs where the federal or state government requires you to do certain things and gives you the money to do them. Voluntary would be grants where you'll receive money from other governments in order to do a certain thing.